This is The Process Shot. I'm Michael. I'm stuck in a haunted movie theater, and I've seen Captive Woman, a weird sort of post-apocalyptic science fiction drama from 1952, directed by Stuart Gilmore. It starts right away with the destruction of the world by way of nuclear weaponry, seeing the survivors eventually splitting into three factions. Norms, who survived without any ill effects from radiation. Mutates, who also survived but obviously suffered for it. And the upriver people, who also avoided physical harm but are explicitly more evil. As for the actual story, it is set in the ruins of New York City and begins with an ambush of the Norms by upriver people in a grab for power. Two norms escape, only to be taken prisoner by mutates who put them on trial for crimes against their people. The mutates are not so innocent, kidnapping norm women for breeding purposes, which leads them to raid the previously raided norm civvy that the upriver people... Okay, I'm just gonna stop there. There's a lot that happens. In a nutshell, it's probably easier to say that this movie has more to it than is probably necessary for what is effectively a sci-fi B-movie that's mostly meant to look at a world after a nuclear war. There's murder, jealousy, betrayals, kidnappings, and for whatever reason, a discussion of faith and belief in God. I mean, it doesn't get all that deep into that or any of those. But it's there, and I'm not sure why. Anyways, the movie has a lot to talk about, but hardly has anything to show for it. Everything that does happen seems to only do so to keep the story moving along, leaving little room within the hour-long runtime for any actual development or pacing. Characters have absolutely nothing to them, but whatever their role is within the universe to the point that some, or even all of them, are interchangeable among each other. The greater themes at play are underwhelming, no matter how much weight the story tries to give them. It all just rolls around to good and evil at the end of the day, and the writing of the film barely tries to hide that dichotomy. Honestly, any idea of deep or personal character or story moments pretty much go out the window once the movie is done setting up the sci-fi premise, which I realize now probably doesn't need to exist if it works as well as a prehistoric caveman story would have worked. The only thing the post-apocalyptic scenario has going for it is the idea of the story being set in the ruins of New York. Speaking of which, even for a world in ruin, it looks a lot like set pieces and backdrops. It just makes the prehistoric setting idea seem even more plausible with how little of the movie has any strong indication of an urban world, especially one as developed as New York City. Pretty much the whole movie is set in desolate areas, whether they be caves, tunnels, or shanty towns. Cinematography does little to at least make these settings seem interesting, and in a few cases, editing doesn't do anything at all to make any area layouts coherent. Both of these are used flatly and practically, and neither of these add anything interesting or creative to the final film. I can't even say anything about the musical score, because I've already forgotten if it was just stock music or bland. Overall, there's nothing much else to say about the movie, because there isn't much else to it at all. It has almost too many ideas to work with, some of which could be found in a better film and handled much better, but their presence in this movie is essentially just that. They're present, and that's good enough for the filmmakers, I guess. Captive Woman, Stuart Gilmore, 1952. One star. I wouldn't recommend watching this movie unless you want to steal from it. I wouldn't hold it against you.
that's it for this review. If you liked it, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a comment. Subscribe to the channel for more reviews. I suppose I can say that this movie is one of the first to tackle the idea of the long-term effects of nuclear war, but I'm going to pretend that it's just an exploitation film and that Godzilla did all of that first. It sure did it all better, at least.